Formula One has often struggled to break into the American market. Historically, the United States has produced several successful drivers, but in more recent years, investment and interest in Formula One has been superseded by domestic series like IndyCar and NASCAR. In 2014, businessman Gene Haas decided to spread his influence out from his eponymous tool manufacturing company and NASCAR team and create a Formula One team of his own. This is the story of Haas F1 team. The rule changes for 2019 primarily focused on the aerodynamics. In an attempt to make the cars easier to follow and improve the wheel-to-wheel racing, the number of elements on the front wing was limited to 7, the maximum width was increased by 200mm, the height by 20mm, and it was moved forward by 25mm. The barge boards were reduced in height by 150mm and moved forward by 100mm, the rear wing height was increased by 20mm, the width by 100mm, and the DRS opening increased by 200mm. The brake ducts were also simplified, and the maximum fuel allowance was increased by 5kg to minimise fuel saving in races. The number of dry tyre compounds was reduced to 5, and a maximum of 3 would be used at each race weekend. On safety grounds, two additional rear lights were added to each of the rear wing end plates to improve visibility in wet conditions. The drivers were now all required to wear biometric gloves that could monitor heart rate and oxygen levels, and a new model of helmets was mandated that had been rigorously tested to the latest safety standards and also had the top of the visor lowered by 10mm. Driver and car weight were now measured separately, and the minimum car weight increased from 733kg to 740kg, with at least 80kg of that consisting of the driver, his seat, helmet and all safety equipment, and there was a small revision to the points system, as the point for fastest lap returned for the first time since 1959, but the driver now had to finish in the top 10 for the point to be awarded. Haas had enjoyed a relatively strong 2018 season. By and large, they were at the sharp end of the midfield, but numerous driver errors and mistakes in the pit lane had cost them fourth in the Constructors' Championship to Renault, which they were aiming to take in 2019, with Romain Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen at the helm for the third year in a row. Preparations for 2019 began only a few days after the 2018 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix with a Pirelli tyre test to test the new compounds. Neither Grosjean nor Magnussen drove in the two-day test, and instead, grandson of two-time champion Emerson Fittipaldi and the 2017 World Series Formula V8 3.5 champion Pietro Fittipaldi drove on the first day, but lost four hours of running due to a power issue, and son of infamous LaRousse and Pacific driver Jean-Denis Delatraz and Renault Academy driver Louis Delatraz drove on the second day and completed 117 laps. Two weeks earlier, Fittipaldi had been confirmed as Haas' official test driver for 2019, and Arjun Maini left his role as development driver after 18 months with the team. On February 7th, Haas were the first team to give a glimpse of what to expect from the 2019 grid when they did a livery launch on a show car at the Royal Automobile Club on Pall Mall in central London. In a major departure from their previous cars, the car featured a sleek black livery of gold highlights as they had taken on their first title sponsor, Rich Energy. Rich Energy had been founded in 2015 as an energy drink company by CEO William Storey and an anonymous Austrian scientist. At the launch, Storey claimed that his intention was to beat rivals Red Bull, quote, on and off the track. However, while Red Bull was the world's leading energy drink company and has created numerous franchises in motor racing and extreme sports, virtually nobody had heard of Rich Energy, and their drinks were very hard to find either in-store or online, and the few people that had managed to said that the taste was almost indistinguishable from Red Bull. In mid-2018, Rich Energy had first got the attention of the Formula One world when they attempted to buy out Force India for $100 million, which was instead bought by Lawrence Stroll and renamed Racing Point, and they then came very close to signing with Williams, but abruptly pulled out of this at the 11th hour and joined Haas instead. Rich Energy's ability to buy out an entire Formula One team was met with scepticism due to their obscurity and limited availability of their product, and Story claimed that they had sold over 90 million cans and were backed by over £4 billion worth of endorsements, but financial documents leaked later on revealed that their bank balance in 2017 was less than £600. Story himself was a bit of an enigma, as he had claimed to have been in the RAF, a professional footballer for the Queen's Park Rangers reserves, a professional gambler, and a tobacco farmer in Zimbabwe. Haas CEO Gene Haas and team principal Gunther Steiner were not appreciative of the scepticism around this new multi-year partnership, claiming the team had done all of their necessary research and screening. Two pre-season testing sessions were planned for 2019, both at Barcelona from February 18th to 21st and February 26th to March 1st. 
On the morning of the first day of the first test, Haas officially unveiled their 2019 Challenger, the VF19. As with all of their previous cars, Delara were heavily involved in the design process, which had been going on since July of 2018, and Ferrari provided the engine, gearbox and suspension, and as per the 2019 regulations, the car had a much wider and much simplified front wing, revised barge boards and an enlarged rear wing. Grosjean drove on the first day and went third fastest, however he completed only 65 laps after the car ground to a halt in the morning of a loss of fuel pressure. After the test, Rich Energy caused a bit of a stir for tweeting, Our first day in F1 and we are faster than Red Bull. Magnussen ran on day two and also went third fastest, but he completed just 59 laps as his seat was fitted incorrectly, meaning he was leaning too far forwards and couldn't hold his head up when braking, so Fittipaldi then replaced him for the rest of the day and completed 13 laps and went 12th fastest. Fittipaldi then drove as scheduled on the morning of the third day and went 8th fastest with only 48 laps after stopping with an ignition problem and Grosjean then drove in the afternoon and went 7th fastest with 69 laps before also stopping with the same ignition problem and then again with an electronics issue. Grosjean ran on the morning of the 4th and final day and went 8th fastest with 64 laps and Magnussen drove in the afternoon and went 9th fastest with 53 laps. It was Magnussen who drove on the first day of the second test and completed a promising 130 laps and went 8th fastest. Grosjean drove on the second day and completed 120 laps and went 5th fastest. Magnussen ran on the morning of the third day and went 12th fastest with 53 laps and Grosjean was due to run in the afternoon but completed only 16 laps to go 9th fastest and was kept in the garage by an exhaust issue. On the fourth and final day, Grosjean ran in the morning and completed 73 laps to go 7th fastest, and Magnussen ran in the afternoon and completed 94 laps to go 10th fastest. Throughout the two tests, Haas had had minor recurring reliability problems, mostly in the first test, and completed 871 laps, 7th overall, but the three drivers felt good about the car and set competitive times, and Magnussen in particular felt that the new regulations were working and making it easier to follow and overtake other cars. Two weeks later, the team travelled to Melbourne for the season opening Australian Grand Prix. Before the weekend had even begun, the paddock was thrown into disarray by the unexpected death of long-term race director Charlie Whiting on the Wednesday, so Michael Massey was brought in as his temporary replacement. Magnussen managed to go 9th fastest in FP1 and Grosjean was 12th, and then in FP2 Grosjean went 10th fastest and Magnussen 12th. In FP3, Grosjean went a very promising 4th and Magnussen was 5th. When qualifying came about, both drivers made it through Q1, though the racing point of Lance Stroll accused Grosjean of blocking him and preventing him from advancing, and Magnussen only narrowly did after having to use an extra set of tyres. They then advanced through Q2 as well, making it the third year in a row that both drivers had made Q3 at Albert Park. In Q3, Grosjean managed to go best of the rest in 6th, only 4 tenths off the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc in 5th, and Magnussen was a quarter of a second slower in 7th, and 2 tenths ahead of the McLaren of Lando Norris in 8th, despite making several errors on his lap, and narrowly avoiding a grid penalty for an unsafe pit release and instead being fined €5,000. Both drivers started the race on the soft tyre. Magnussen had the better start and passed Grosjean off the line, who narrowly avoided being passed by the Renault of Nico Hülkenberg around the outside of Turn 1. In the first stint, the two drivers fell away from Leclerc in front as expected and led the midfield pack. Magnussen pitted on lap 14 for a set of medium tyres from 7 seconds behind Leclerc and rejoined in 12th, just ahead of Holkenberg who had pitted the previous lap and tried to pass him at turn 3 on lap 15. Grosjean then pitted for a set of medium tyres on lap 15, but the front left was slow going on and he was stationary for almost 11 seconds and rejoined in 14th, two seconds behind Norris who also pitted and just in front of the Toro Rosso of Alex Albon, who like with Hülkenberg tried to pass them at turn 3 on lap 16. Magnussen passed the Alfa Romeo of Antonio Giovinazzi at turn 13 on lap 18. Grosjean eventually then passed him there on lap 26 as well. The Toro Rosso of Daniel Kvyat pitted on lap 26 and Stroll on lap 27 which moved Magnussen up to 7th. On lap 30, Grosjean pulled over at turn 15 after the front left wheel came loose, in an instant reminiscent of Haas's calamitous double retirement in Australia the previous year. The Red Bull of Pierre Gasly pitted on lap 37 which gave Magnussen 6th. Magnussen was now 24 seconds behind Leclerc and just 2 seconds in front of Hülkenberg. He slowly pulled away from Hülkenberg and just avoided being lapped and finished 28 seconds behind Leclerc in 6th. Next up was the Bahrain Grand Prix. Both drivers were slow in FP1 and Grosjean damaged his front wing. Qualifying runs were better, and in qualifying itself, both drivers made Q3 once again. 
Magnussen qualified sixth, just five thousandths of a second behind the Red Bull of Max Verstappen in fifth and less than a second off pole, and Grosjean was a quarter of a second slower in eighth, behind the McLaren of Carlos Sainz. However, Grosjean was then given a three-place grid penalty for impeding Norris in Q1 and so started 11th. Both drivers started the race on soft tyres. Magnussen had a slightly slow start and was passed by Sainz off the line, but in turn passed Verstappen, but Verstappen repassed him at Turn 1. Grosjean was passed by the racing point of Sergio Perez and Gasly there, but was then hit by Stroll at Turn 2 which gave him a puncture and he swiftly dropped to last. He passed a hobbling Stroll whose front wing was broken at Turn 11 but was repassed by him at Turn 13 and then pitted for a set of medium tyres and rejoined in 20th and last, 4 seconds behind Stroll. Sainz and Verstappen collided in front of Magnussen at Turn 4 on lap 4 which broke Sainz's front wing and gave him a puncture and Magnussen passed him at Turn 7. Sainz then pitted and rejoined 14 seconds behind Grosjean. Magnussen was immediately being pressured by the cars behind and on lap 6 was passed by the Renault of Daniel Ricciardo at turn 1, the Alfa Romeo of Kimi Raikkonen at turn 10 and Hülkenberg at turn 11. Perez then passed him at turn 1 on lap 7 but then pitted on lap 8. Norris then passed him at turn 1 on lap 9 and on lap 10 Magnussen pitted for a set of medium tyres along with Norris and rejoined in 15th just in front of Gasly and Albon. The Williams of Robert Kubica pitted on lap 11 which gave Magnussen a place. Giovinazzi and Kvyat collided at turn 11 on lap 12 which spun Kvyat round and he then pitted along with the Williams of George Russell which gave Magnussen 12th. Giovinazzi pitted on lap 16 which gave him another place but Gasly then passed him at turn 1 on lap 17. Grosjean fell to 8 seconds behind Stroll and due to the damage to the car's floor from the puncture pitted to retire on lap 16. Albon passed Magnussen at turn 1 on lap 18. Ricardo pitted on lap 24 and rejoined 6 seconds behind Magnussen and Albon then pitted from just in front of Magnussen on lap 25 which gave him 11th. Ricardo caught Magnussen by a second per lap and passed him at turn 1 on lap 30. Giovinazzi then passed him at turn 11 on lap 33 but Raikkonen and Perez then pitted which gave him 2 more places. Raikkonen swiftly passed Magnussen at turn line on lap 35 and then Albon did at turn 4 on lap 36 and Kvyat did at turn 1 on lap 38. Magnussen then pitted for a second set of soft tyres just behind Kvyat and managed to pass Kvyat in the pit lane and rejoined 14th and lapped, 22 seconds behind Perez and 3 seconds in front of Kvyat. Kvyat passed Magnussen once again at turn 4 on lap 42. Hülkenberg and Ricardo both retired on lap 54 which gave Magnussen two places and brought out the safety car. The race ended behind the safety car with Magnussen in a very disappointing 13th and he was 46 seconds behind Norris in 6th when the safety car was deployed, having been passed on track 15 times as he was unable to get the tyres up to temperature and had poor straight line speed. After two rounds, Magnussen was 8th in the Drivers' Championship with 8 points and Grosjean was 20th and last, yet to see the chequered flag and Haas sat 6th in the Constructors' Championship. A few days after the race, a two-day test was held at Sakia, which Haas intended to use to try and understand their poor race pace there. Grosjean ran on the morning of the first day and completed 42 laps to go fourth fastest, and Fittipaldi drove in the afternoon but oddly enough was interrupted by rain and completed 20 laps to go 12th fastest. Fittipaldi drove again on the morning of the second day and completed 48 laps to go 12th fastest again, and Grosjean ran in the afternoon and completed 87 laps to go 10th fastest. Next up was Formula 1's 1,000th race, the Chinese Grand Prix. Here, the team brought a low downforce rear wing and revised diffuser. Both drivers struggled for pace in Friday practice, and Grosjean's front wing also disintegrated during a hot lap in FP2. In qualifying, both drivers made it into Q3 once again, but neither set a time as they were last to leave the garage and got caught in the queue and didn't cross the start-finish line in time, so Magnussen started 9th and Grosjean 10th. Both drivers started the race on soft tyres, Perez passed both of them at turn 2, Grosjean then passed Magnussen down the back straight and then the virtual safety car was deployed due to a collision between Kvyat, Sainz and Norris at turn 4. The race resumed on lap 2, Raikkonen passed Magnussen at turn 14 on lap 3 and Grosjean there on lap 4, putting them both out of the points. They both lost a second per lap to Raikkonen and Grosjean then pitted for a set of hard tyres and rejoined in 17th, 4 seconds behind Kvyat and 5 seconds in front of Giovinazzi. Magnussen did the same on lap 9 and rejoined 5 seconds behind Grosjean and just in front of Giovinazzi. Hülkenberg pitted on lap 11 and rejoined just behind Grosjean. Grosjean passed Kubica at turn 4 on lap 13 and Magnussen did at turn 14. Magnussen then passed Hülkenberg at turn 1 on lap 16 who then retired. Grosjean closed up to Kvyat and Russell and then passed Russell at turn 11 on lap 17 and Magnussen then passed him at turn 14. Albon pitted on lap 19 which gave both drivers a place. 
Grosjean then passed Kvyat at turn 4 on lap 22. Kvyat pitted on lap 25 from just in front of Magnussen and Raikkonen also pitted and rejoined just behind Magnussen and then passed him at turn 4 on lap 26 and then Grosjean at turn 14 on lap 28. Albon passed Magnussen at turn 4 on lap 30 and Stroll passed him at turn 14 on lap 31. Magnussen pitted for a set of medium tyres on lap 33 and rejoined 13 seconds behind Sainz in 14th and lapped. Grosjean did the same on lap 35 and rejoined 3 seconds in front of Magnussen. Sainz pitted on lap 36 which gave both drivers a place. Stroll pitted on lap 44 from 7 seconds in front of Grosjean and rejoined 8 seconds behind Magnussen. Grosjean closed up to Albon in the final stint and finished less than a second behind in 11th, and Stroll caught Magnussen in the final stint and passed him at turn 14 on the final lap and Magnussen finished 13th. Once again, they struggled with poor tyre temperatures and poor straight line speed. Magnussen dropped to 9th in the Drivers' Championship and Grosjean moved up to 17th and Haas remained 6th in the Constructors' Championship. Next up was the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, a circuit Haas were expecting to struggle at with its long straights and low speed corners. Little to no running was done by anyone in FP1 after Russell hit a loose drain cover and that all of them had to be checked over. The team's expected struggles came in qualifying as Grosjean was eliminated in Q1 and qualified 16th. Magnussen got blocked on his last run in Q2 and qualified 14th. A grid penalty for Giovinazzi and Raikkonen and Gasly's exclusion from qualifying meant Magnussen started 12th and Grosjean 14th. For the first time that year, the team ran a split strategy with Magnussen starting on soft tyres and Grosjean on mediums. Magnussen almost missed the lights and was passed by Stroll off the line and Grosjean also had a poor start and was passed by Hülkenberg and then by Giovinazzi at Turn 1. Kvyat pitted from just in front of Magnussen on lap 5 which gave both drivers a place. Gasly then passed Grosjean at Turn 1 on lap 6 and Grosjean then passed Giovinazzi at Turn 1 on lap 7 and Gasly then passed Magnussen at Turn 3. Magnussen then pitted for a set of medium tyres and rejoined two seconds behind Kvyat in 18th. Hülkenberg pitted from just in front of Grosjean on lap 8 which gave both drivers a place. Norris pitted on lap 9 and Perez, Stroll and Ricardo on lap 10 which moved Gasly up to 9th and Magnussen to 15th. Grosjean then passed Albon on the main straight on lap 11. Magnussen passed Kubica and there on lap 12 and Sites and Albon pitted which gave Grosjean 7th and Magnussen 13th. Magnussen then passed Russell also on the back straight on lap 13. Perez passed Grosjean on the main straight on lap 14, Norris passed him there on lap 15, and then Sites on lap 16. Kvyat passed Grosjean at turn 1 on lap 18, and he was now 3 seconds in front of Magnussen. Ricardo passed Magnussen on the main straight on lap 21. On lap 24, Grosjean locked up braking for turn 5 and went into the escape road and rejoined behind Raikkonen in 14th. Hülkenberg and Giovinazzi both then passed him on the main straight, and Stroll passed Magnussen at turn 1 on lap 25. Albon then passed Grosjean down the main straight on lap 25 as well. Raikkonen passed Magnussen at turn 1 on lap 27. Ricardo and Kvyat collided at turn 3 on lap 31 and went into the escape road which gave both drivers two places. Giovinazzi tried to pass Magnussen at turn 1 on lap 32 but Magnussen locked up and pushed both of them wide and Giovinazzi and Albon then both passed him at turn 1 on lap 33. Grosjean pitted for a set of soft tyres on lap 34, two seconds after Hülkenberg and rejoined 20 seconds in front of Russell and lapped, and three seconds behind Hülkenberg, who was 25 seconds behind Magnussen. Magnussen was lapped on lap 37. Grosjean rapidly lost time to Hülkenberg due to a long brake pedal and pulled into the pits to retire on lap 38, as they had attempted to use the brakes to get heat into the tyres which had overheated the brakes. Gasly retired at the same time which gave Magnussen a place and brought out the virtual safety car. Magnussen took the chance to pit for a second set of soft tyres and rejoined 23 seconds behind Giovinazzi and 14 seconds in front of Hülkenberg and finished 13th for the third race in a row. Magnussen dropped to 10th in the Drivers' Championship and Grosjean dropped to 18th and Haas dropped to 8th in the Constructors' Championship. At the Spanish Grand Prix, a new upgrade package was put on Grosjean's car. Both drivers set competitive practice times at a circuit they expected to suit them, and in qualifying they both made it to Q3 and were best of the rest, 11 thousandths apart in 7th and 8th, with Grosjean 2 tenths off Gasly in 6th and Magnussen 6 tenths ahead of Kvyat in 9th. Both drivers started the race on soft tyres. Magnussen was passed by Kvyat on the run to Turn 1 but repassed him at Turn 4. They fell away from the front runners as expected and led the midfield in the first stint and Grosjean built a 4 second lead over Magnussen. The Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel pitted on lap 19 and Gasly on lap 22 which gave both drivers two places. Magnussen pitted for a set of medium tyres on lap 23 and rejoined two and a half seconds behind Norris in 14th. 
Sainz, Perez and Ricardo pitted on lap 24 which gave Magnussen 3 places and Leclerc pitted on lap 25 and rejoined just behind Grosjean. Magnussen then passed Norris at turn 1 on lap 26. Grosjean pitted for a set of medium tyres on lap 26 and rejoined back in 8th just behind Hülkenberg and 2 seconds in front of Magnussen. Grosjean then passed Hülkenberg at turn 10 on lap 27. Magnussen eventually passed Hülkenberg at turn 1 on lap 33, putting them back in their original positions. Kvyat had closed up to Magnussen and passed him at turn 1 on lap 36. Grosjean was 9 seconds ahead of Kvyat and only 10 seconds behind Gasly when Stroll and Norris collided at turn 1 on lap 45 and brought out the safety car. Magnussen pitted for a second set of soft tyres along with Kvyat on lap 45, but Kvyat had a slow stop and was passed by Magnussen in the pit lane. Grosjean then did the same on lap 46. The race resumed at the end of lap 52. Magnussen passed Grosjean at turn 1 on lap 53, but they banged wheels which forced Grosjean onto the runoff, and Magnussen then almost passed Gasly at turn 4. The front runners pulled away as expected, and on lap 57 Grosjean tried to repass Magnussen at turn 1 and was pushed onto the runoff once again and ran over a sausage curve. This allowed Sainz to close up to Grosjean who also banged wheels and pushed him wide at turn 1 on lap 58, but did not get passed. He then did pass him there on lap 59, and Kvyat passed him there as well on lap 61, and they finished in 7th and 10th, in their first double points finish of the year. As a result of this, Magnussen jumped up to 7th in the Drivers' Championship, and Grosjean went up to 17th, and Haas jumped up to 6th in the Constructors' Championship. A few days after the race, another two-day in-season test was held at Barcelona. Fittipaldi drove on the first day and completed 103 laps to go 7th fastest, and Magnussen drove on the second day and completed 106 laps to go 6th fastest. Next up was the glamour of the Monaco Grand Prix. Here, Haas brought a raft of upgrades including elaborate new barge balls and a 2017 ST wing on the engine cover. They also ran a tribute to three-time champion Niki Lauda on the engine cover who had recently died. Pace in practice was strong, but in qualifying, Grosjean was blocked by Gasly and eliminated in Q2 and qualified 13th. Magnussen hit the wall at Mirabeau Hort and broke off his front wing but made it into Q3 and qualified 6th, although he missed the DRS activation on the main straight without which he felt he could have qualified 4th. Gasly received a 3 place grip penalty for impeding Grosjean which moved Magnussen up to 5th. Both drivers started the race on soft tyres. Ricardo passed Magnussen at saint devaux and Grosjean passed Norris at Mirabeau Hort. Leclerc passed Grosjean at Rascas on lap 7, but on lap 8 Leclerc then tried to pass Holkenberg there but clipped the inside wall and was immediately repassed by Grosjean. He then passed Holkenberg at Mirabeau Hort on lap 9 and the safety car was deployed on lap 11 after Leclerc got a puncture and shed rubber and carbon fibre all over the track. Magnussen pitted for a set of medium tyres along with Ricardo and rejoined in 14th and Grosjean stayed out and moved up to 9th. The race resumed at the end of lap 14. Magnussen was now stuck in a train behind Norris in 10th who was deliberately creating a gap for teammate Sainz in 6th to slip into after pitting to try and stay ahead of Kvyat and Albon in 7th and 8th. Gasly pitted on lap 27 and reached on 13 seconds behind Grosjean. Sainz then pitted on lap 30 and Kvyat on lap 32 which moved Grosjean up to 6th. Stroll pitted on lap 39 which gave Magnussen a place and Albon then pitted on lap 40 which gave Grosjean 5th. On lap 44, Perez tried to pass Magnussen at the Nouvelle Chicane and Magnussen stayed ahead by cutting it. Raikkonen, who had also held Magnussen up, pitted on lap 46 which gave him 12th. Norris pitted on lap 47 and rejoined just in front of Magnussen. Grosjean pitted for a set of medium tyres on lap 50 and rejoined 4 seconds behind Albon in 9th. On lap 74, Grosjean was given a 5 second time penalty for crossing the pit exit in his pit stop. Magnussen was lapsed on lap 75, and Grosjean finished 9th but with his penalty was demoted to 10th, behind Ricardo, and Magnussen finished 12th but was then also given a 5 second time penalty for cutting the Nouvelle Chicane and dropped to 14th. Magnussen therefore dropped to 8th in the Drivers' Championship. Before the Canadian Grand Prix, Haas announced that Louis Delatraz had joined them as a simulator driver for the rest of the season. In March, British company White Bikes had launched a lawsuit against Rich Energy for copyright infringement due to the uncanny resemblance between their two Deer Antler logos. White Bikes won the lawsuit, and so from the Canadian Grand Prix onwards Haas were forced to remove the antlers from their cars. During the trial, William Storey was very evasive when questioned and often made grandiose statements in the third person, leaving the judge unconvinced he was being entirely honest about where his money was coming from. After the trial, Rich Energy were forced to pay £35,416 in damages to White Bikes by July 11th and to fully disclose their financial and legal documents by August 1st. 
They had been regularly antagonising white bikes on Twitter, and after the ruling posted, Enjoy the free PR while you can, guys. Those with an IQ higher than their age realise you are Mickey Mouse. Oh, how we will laugh in due course. We are actually investing money in F1 whilst you are investing zero. Total parasites who knew about us for two years before piping up. Grosjean hit the wall of champions in FP3 and damaged his rear wing, and in Q2 he flat spotted his tyres on his first run and aborted it, and on his second run, Magnussen hit the wall of champions and spun into the pit wall and red flagged the session. With no Q2 lap time, Grosjean qualified 15th, but Magnussen's first lap was fast enough to advance to Q3, and by red flagging Q2 he inadvertently prevented Verstappen from advancing and qualified 10th, not being able to set a time in Q3, but as they had to replace the chassis and the gearbox, he started the race from the pit lane. The team ran a split strategy with Grosjean starting on medium tyres and Magnussen on hards. Grosjean had a poor start and was passed by Perez off the line. Albon and Giovinazzi collided at Turn 1, and a chunk of Albon's front wing broke off and got lodged in between Grosjean's halo and right bargeboard. He was forced to cut the corner and remove the debris of his right hand, and he rejoined the track in 19th. Grosjean passed Albon at the Le Pong Le Hairpin, and Albon then pitted, leaving Grosjean 18th and Magnussen 19th at the end of lap 1. Grosjean passed Kubica on the back straight on lap 3, and Sainz then pitted which gave both drivers a place. Magnussen then passed Kubica at Turn 1 on lap 4. Grosjean passed Russell at the final chicane on lap 6, and Raikkonen then pitted which gave both drivers another place. Magnussen then passed Russell at the final chicane on lap 8. Norris retired on lap 9 which gave both drivers another place. Sykes passed Magnussen at the final chicane on lap 10, and Perez pitted on lap 11 and Kvyat on lap 12 which gave both drivers two places. Kvyat passed Magnussen at turn 1 on lap 14, and Perez did at turn 8. Raikkonen then passed him at the final chicane on lap 15, and Sykes passed Grosjean there on lap 16. Grosjean lost half a second per lap to Sainz and Magnussen lost a whole second per lap to Raikkonen and was first lapped on lap 21. Kvyat passed Grosjean at the final chicane on lap 27 and Perez passed him at turn 1 on lap 32. Giovinazzi pitted on lap 33 and rejoined 18 seconds in front of Magnussen. Grosjean pitted for a set of hard tyres on lap 34 and rejoined in 15th, 10 seconds in front of Magnussen. Magnussen pitted for a set of medium tyres on lap 39 and rejoined 7.5 seconds behind Russell in 18th and 47 seconds ahead of Kubica. He was lapped for a second time on lap 49. On lap 51, Magnussen said over the radio to his race engineer Gary Gannon, This is the worst experience I've ever had in any race car ever. The following lap, Gannon responded saying, None of us are happy about this pace. The guy stayed up all night to fix this car. And Magnussen interrupted saying, I know, I know, it's just... And Gannon said, It sucks, I know. At this point, Gunther Steiner intervened saying, It's enough now, this is Gunther, it's enough. Magnussen said, What does that mean? And Gunther said, It means that for us it's also not a nice experience. It's enough now, that's what it means, enough means enough. Raikkonen pitted on lap 58 and rejoined 5 seconds behind Grosjean. Albon retired on lap 60 which gave Magnussen a place and they finished a trying race in 14th and 17th. Magnussen dropped to 9th in the Drivers' Championship and Haas dropped to 8th in the Constructors' Championship. Next up was Grosjean's home race, the French Grand Prix. Grosjean spent most of FP1 in the garage due to a water leak and then flat spotted his tyres almost immediately in FP2. In qualifying, Grosjean was eliminated in Q1 and lined up 17th, and Magnussen just about scraped into Q2 to qualify 15th. A grid penalty for Kvyat moved Grosjean up to 16th. Magnussen started the race on medium tyres and Grosjean on hards. Stroll passed Grosjean off the line and Magnussen then passed Perez at turn 2, and Kubica also passed Grosjean there. Magnussen passed Albon at turn 4, and Perez cut the corner there and rejoined in front of Magnussen, leaving Magnussen 14th and Grosjean 18th at the end of lap 1. Grosjean passed Kubica at the Mistral chicane on lap 3. Giovinazzi pitted on lap 7 which gave both drivers a place. Kvyat passed Grosjean at the Mistral chicane on lap 8. Stroll passed Magnussen there on lap 12 and Albon then did on lap 14 and Kvyat did at Sinez on lap 15. Magnussen pitted for a set of hard tyres on lap 16 and rejoined 4 seconds behind Russell in 20th and last. Ricardo pitted as well and rejoined 7 seconds behind Grosjean. Gasly then pitted on lap 17 and Perez on lap 18 which gave Grosjean two more places. Magnussen passed Kubica at the Mistral chicane on lap 20 and then passed Russell there on lap 24. Albon pitted on lap 25 which gave Grosjean a place. Ricardo then passed him at the Mistral chicane on lap 27 and Gasly also did that on lap 28. Magnussen was then lapped. 
Grosjean pitted for a set of medium tyres on lap 31 and overcut Magnussen and rejoined 6 seconds in front in 17th and 10 seconds behind Giovinazzi. Kvyat pitted on lap 32 and rejoined 8 seconds in front of Grosjean. Giovinazzi pitted on lap 34 and rejoined 9 seconds behind Magnussen. On lap 45, Haas made the decision to retire Grosjean's car. The virtual safety car was deployed on lap 50 to retrieve a loose bollard. Giovinazzi caught and passed Magnussen at Signes on lap 51, and he finished what Gunther Steiner considered to be Haas's worst Grand Prix weekend in 17th. Magnussen dropped to 11th in the Drivers' Championship, and Haas dropped to 9th in the Constructors' Championship. Next up was the Austrian Grand Prix, the site of the team's best results the previous year. Lap times in practice were good, but Magnussen had to replace his gearbox in FP3. In qualifying, both drivers made it into Q2, but Grosjean just missed the cut for Q3 and lined up 11th, and Magnussen made Q3 and managed to put himself 5th, with just over a 10th separating 5th to 9th, but with a 5th place grid penalty for his gearbox change he started 10th. Magnussen started the race on soft tyres and Grosjean on mediums. Magnussen rolled forwards in his grid box as the lights were coming on, and Grosjean had a poor start and was passed by Ricardo and Perez off the line. Perez then passed Magnussen at Ramus, but he repassed him at Schlossgold, and then Stroll, Hülkenberg and Kubica passed Grosjean there, and then Sainz did two on lap three. Magnussen's tyres started overheating almost immediately, and he was passed by Perez at Ramus on lap four, Hülkenberg there on lap five, Stroll at Schlossgold on lap six, Ricardo at Ramus on lap seven, and Sainz at Schlossgold on lap nine, and now had Grosjean behind him. Grosjean was forced wide by Albon, and then he allowed a curve on lap ten and passed by him there. Albon then passed Magnussen at Ramus on lap 11, but Magnussen repassed him at Schlossgold. He then decided to ditch the soft tyres and pitted for a set of hards and rejoined 15 seconds behind Kubica in 20th and last. On his outlap, he was awarded a drive through penalty for being out of position at the start and served this on lap 13 and rejoined 30 seconds behind Kubica and lapped. Kubica pitted on lap 19 and rejoined 2 seconds in front of Magnussen and he passed him at Rauch on lap 22. Raikkonen pitted on lap 23 and rejoined 2 seconds in front of Grosjean. Giovinazzi then pitted on lap 24 and rejoined one second behind Grosjean. Stroll pitted on lap 25 which gave Grosjean a place, and Giovinazzi then passed him at Ramus on lap 26. Hülkenberg pitted on lap 26 and rejoined two seconds behind Grosjean. Russell pitted on lap 27 and rejoined nine seconds in front of Magnussen. Hülkenberg passed Grosjean at Ramus on lap 29, and Stroll passed him there on lap 31. Kvyat pitted from four seconds behind Grosjean on lap 32 and rejoined 27 seconds behind. Grosjean then pitted for a set of hard tyres on lap 34 from 6 seconds behind Stroll and rejoined 28 seconds behind and 4 seconds in front of Kvyat and laps. Albon pitted on lap 35 and rejoined 12 seconds in front of Grosjean. Magnussen was lapped for a second time on lap 61. He'd got to 6 seconds behind Russell and then pitted for a second set of soft tyres on lap 62 and rejoined 26 seconds behind Russell and 33 seconds in front of Kubica. Grosjean finished a mystifying race 8 seconds behind Albon in 16th, and Magnussen was 22 seconds behind Russell in 19th, and dropped to 12th in the Drivers' Championship. On the Wednesday before the British Grand Prix, Rich Energy abruptly announced, via Twitter, that they were to part ways with Haas with immediate effect, saying, Today, Rich Energy terminated our contract with Haas F1 team for poor performance. We aim to beat Red Bull, and being behind Williams in Austria is unacceptable. The politics and PC attitude at F1 is also inhibiting our business. We wish the team well. This caught Haas completely by surprise, especially as the previous day Rich Energy made a post on their Instagram account saying, British GP week, looking forward to a fantastic race and one of the biggest F1 events on the calendar. The following day, Gunther Steiner released an official statement saying, Rich Energy is currently the title partner of Haas F1 team. I cannot comment further on the contractual relationship between our two parties due to commercial confidentiality. Later that day, Rich Energy clarified the situation by saying, The shareholders who own the majority of Rich Energy would like to clarify certain statements that have been circulated in the media from an unauthorised source. We wholeheartedly believe in the Haas F1 team, its performance and the organisation as a whole and we are fully committed to the current sponsorship agreement in place. We also completely believe in the product of Formula 1 and the platform that offers our brand. Clearly, the rogue actions of one individual have caused great embarrassment. We are in the process of legally removing the individual from all executive responsibilities. They may speak for themselves, but their views are not those of the company. The incident is very regrettable. We will not be making further comment on this commercially sensitive matter and will be concluding it behind closed doors. 
We wish to confirm our commitment to the Haas F1 team, Formula One, and to thank the Haas F1 team for their support and patience whilst this matter is dealt with internally. It quickly came to light that the individual in question was William Storey himself, who the company's shareholders had been in the process of firing, and he responded in turn by saying, The ludicrous statement by minority shareholders cosy with Red Bull and white bikes is risible. Their attempted palace coup has failed. I control all assets at Rich Energy and have the support of all key stakeholders. At the end of that day, the deadline for Rich Energy paying damages to white bikes had also passed without them paying. For that weekend, Haas had made the decision to revert Grosjean's car back to the factory spec that it ran in in Australia in order to compare it against their upgrade package remaining on Magnussen's car as it had not delivered them the expected results. Grosjean crashed at the pit exit at the beginning of FP1, but despite that, felt that the car was better in its debugged form, and at the end of the day, Story, who apparently still had access to the Rich Energy Twitter account, tweeted, Haas F1 team love Rich Energy so much, we don't blame them as hashtag better than Red Bull. They have kept our brand delivery on the car even after we sacked them for poor performance. In qualifying, Magnussen ended up being eliminated in Q1 by 13 thousandths of a second and lined up 16th, and Grosjean seemed set for Q3 but then lost 4 tenths in Q2 after his tyre blankets were set to the wrong temperature and qualified 14th. Both drivers started the race on soft tyres. Magnussen passed Perez at Abbey and went side by side with Grosjean exiting Arena. They banged wheels which gave Magnussen a left rear puncture and Grosjean a right rear puncture. They were both passed by the rest of the field going through Brooklands and Luffield. Grosjean was able to crawl back to the pits faster than Magnussen and pitted for a set of hard tyres and read on 47 seconds behind Kubica in 19th, and Magnussen pitted 29 seconds later for a set of hard tyres and read on 26 seconds behind in 20th and last. Magnussen was lapped on lap 2, and by Maggots and Beckett's on lap 3 had been lapsed by the entire field, save for Grosjean. On lap 5, he reported something loose in between the pedals, so pitted to retire on lap 6. Grosjean was lapped on lap 9, and he then pitted to retire as well. While this was ongoing, Story tweeted, from the Rich Energy Twitter account, a picture of himself driving a milk float with the Rich Energy livery superimposed on and a sarcastic caption of, Great start, boys. And later on, Story publicised an email Hass's lawyers had sent to Rich Energy three days earlier requesting the immediate termination of the sponsorship deal and payment of all money promised over the three years of its duration via the Rich Energy Twitter account once again, and tweeted, just to disavow people of lies from Haas F1 team, please see below. Rich Energy terminated the agreement as we said. The team have accepted, contrary to their public denial. They were complicit in trying to oust CEO William Storey who even gave them a £35 million personal guarantee. Therefore revealing the size of their sponsorship deal, almost 1,000 times larger than the money they owed to white bikes. Two days later, Story was summoned to court for an unrelated case whereby he had sold 20% of Rich Energy stock to fine wine investment company Vinex in 2017 and failed to deliver on it. Rich Energy's own lawyers declined to represent him. Following this, he was subsequently ousted as Rich Energy CEO and the parent company Rich Energy Limited was renamed Lightning Vault Limited and a new logo was presented that was barely different from the original. Despite that, he still had control of the Twitter account, and he then leaked documents confirming that Red Bull were now suing Haas as well for using Red Bull's own advertising slogans against them. Despite all this, Rich Energy remained on Haas's cars for the German Grand Prix, and Rich Energy had apparently now wrestled control of their Twitter account from Story. Magnus's car broke down in FP1 due to a sensor failure and he had to be towed back to the pits, and in qualifying he was eliminated in Q2, missing out by less than 3 hundredths and qualified 12th. Grosjean however made it into Q3 and managed to qualify 6th. Heavy rain came on race day, and so all drivers started on wet tyres, and the decision was made to run the formation lap behind the safety car with a standing start. Three extra laps were spent behind the safety car, and Grosjean passed Gasly off the line. Magnussen passed Giovinazzi at turn 4 and Perez at the hairpin. Hülkenberg and Leclerc both passed Grosjean there, leaving Grosjean 7th and Magnussen 10th at the end of lap 1. Perez passed Magnussen at turn 2 on lap 2 but ran wide, and then passed him again on the run to the hairpin but Magnussen repassed him there again. Perez then spun off behind him at turn 10 and the safety car was deployed. Grosjean pitted for a set of intermediate tyres at the end of lap 3 along with the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton, Bottas, Verstappen, Raikkonen, Hülkenberg, Leclerc, Gasly, Sainz, Giovinazzi, Ricciardo and Kvyat but was blocked by Leclerc exiting his pit box and rejoined in 15th while Magnussen stayed out and moved up to 2nd. The race resumed at the end of lap 4. 
Magnussen was passed by Bottas at turn 4 on lap 5 and then Verstappen at the hairpin. Leclerc then passed him at turn 2 on lap 6 and Hulkenberg did at turn 4. Giovinazzi then passed Grosjean at turn 2 and Gasly did at the hairpin but then ran wide and Grosjean also passed Kubica there. Norris pitted on lap 6 which gave Grosjean a place and he then passed Russell at turn 2 on lap 7. Raikkonen passed Magnussen at the Parabolica on lap 7 but then ran wide at the hairpin. Stroll pitted on lap 7 which gave Grosjean another place and Raikkonen passed Magnussen again at turn 2 on lap 8, Leclerc passed him at the Parabolica and Sainz passed him at the hairpin. Magnussen finally pitted for a set of intermediate tyres on lap 8 and rejoined just behind Norris in 16th and Grosjean moved up to 11th. Ricardo pulled over and retired on lap 14 which gave Magnussen a place and the virtual safety car was deployed until lap 16. DRS was enabled on lap 17. Gasly passed Grosjean at the hairpin on lap 18 and Sainz then spun at the Sud curve which gave him the place back and rejoined 5 seconds in front of Magnussen. Stroll passed Magnussen at the hairpin on lap 20. Magnussen pitted on lap 21 for a set of soft tyres from 31 seconds in front of Russell and rejoined 9 seconds in front and lapped. Vettel pitted on lap 23 and rejoined 2 seconds behind Grosjean. Stroll pitted on lap 25 and rejoined 2 seconds in front of Magnussen and Magnussen passed him at turn 4 on lap 26. Grosjean pitted for a set of soft tyres on lap 26 and rejoined 10 seconds behind Gasly in 12th and lapped. While Grosjean was in the pit lane, Norris pulled over and retired which gave Magnussen a place and brought out the virtual safety car for the second time. The race resumed on lap 28. Almost immediately, Grosjean spun at the Sud curve and was passed by Kvyat and then Magnussen at the Nord curve on lap 28. Leclerc then spun off at the Sud curve which gave both drivers a place and brought out the safety car for the second time. Rain started coming back so Grosjean pitted for a second set of intermediate tyres and rejoined in 13th and Kvyat also pitted which moved Magnussen up to 11th. Magnussen then pitted for a second set of intermediate tyres on lap 29 and rejoined in front of Grosjean in 12th and both drivers were permitted to unlap themselves. The race resumed at the end of lap 33. Grosjean passed Magnussen at the Nord curve on lap 34. Hulkenberg spun off at the Sud curve on lap 40 which gave both drivers a place and the safety car was deployed for the third time. Grosjean pitted for a third set of intermediate tyres on lap 41 and was passed by Magnussen and Magnussen did the same on lap 42 and gave Grosjean the place back. The race resumed at the end of lap 45. The rain had stopped and the track was drying out so Magnussen immediately pitted for a second set of soft tyres along with Kvyat and rejoined 7 seconds behind Kvyat in 15th and last and Grosjean moved up to 10th. Grosjean did the same on lap 46 along with Gasly, Albon and Kubica and rejoined in front of Kubica in 14th while Magnussen moved up to 12th in between Gasly and Albon. Magnussen passed Gasly at the hairpin on lap 47. Vettel, Raikkonen, Hamilton, Giovinazzi and Russell then pitted which moved Magnussen up to 6th and Grosjean to 11th. Grosjean passed Raikkonen at the hairpin on lap 48, putting both drivers in the points. Albon passed Magnussen at the Parabolica on lap 50, Vettel did at the hairpin on lap 51 and Gasly did at the Parabolica on lap 52. Grosjean tried to pass Magnussen around the outside of the hairpin on lap 53 but they banged wheels again. Magnussen was then ordered to let him pass at the Nord curve on lap 54 and Raikkonen then passed Magnussen at the Parabolica. Raikkonen passed Grosjean as well at the hairpin on lap 55 and Giovinazzi passed Magnussen there on lap 56. Bottas crashed out at the Nord curve on lap 57 which gave both drivers a place and brought the safety car out for the fourth time. Magnussen pitted for a third set of soft tyres and maintained position. The race resumed at the end of lap 59. Giovinazzi passed Grosjean at the hairpin on lap 62. Gasly then rear-ended Albon and crashed out which gave both drivers a place and they finished a chaotic race in 9th and 10th. However, after the race, Raikkonen and Giovinazzi both had 30 seconds added to their respective race times for using driver aids at the start of the race, and Grosjean and Magnussen were promoted to 7th and 8th. As a result of this, Magnussen dropped to 13th in the Drivers' Championship, and Haas were now tied on points of Alfa Romeo in the Constructors' Championship. The final race before the summer break was the Hungarian Grand Prix. Rain came in FP2 which interrupted running. In qualifying, Magnussen managed to go 4th in Q1, but then inexplicably lost 9 tenths in Q2 and qualified 15th. Grosjean did the opposite and only just made it out of Q1, but then made Q3 to qualify 9th. A grid penalty for Giovinazzi moved Magnussen up a place. Magnussen started the race on medium tyres and Grosjean on softs. Raikkonen passed Grosjean at Turn 1, and Magnussen locked up at Turn 2 and was passed by Pedas there and then by Russell at Turn 4. Bottas pitted on lap 5 which gave both drivers a place. Magnussen passed Russell at turn 2 on lap 12. Perez pitted on lap 18 which gave Magnussen a place. Grosjean then pitted for a set of hard tyres on lap 19 and rejoined just behind Perez in 16th and was lapped on lap 21. 
Kvyat pitted on lap 22 and rejoined just behind Grosjean. Kvyat then passed Grosjean at turn 1 on lap 24. Norris and Albon pitted on lap 28 which gave Magnussen two places. Norris passed Magnussen at turn 1 on lap 33 and Bottas did there on lap 34. Hulkenberg pitted on lap 36 and rejoined 6 seconds in front of Grosjean. Magnussen pitted for a set of soft tyres on lap 38 and rejoined just behind Grosjean in 16th. Grosjean was then ordered to let him pass on lap 39. Ricardo pitted on lap 46 and rejoined 8 seconds behind Magnussen and just in front of Grosjean. On lap 49, Grosjean pitted a retire with a loss of water pressure. Magnussen closed up to Hülkenberg in the final stint and Ricardo closed up behind him. He passed Kvyat at turn 1 on lap 67 and finished 13th. Going into the summer break, Magnussen was 13th in the Drivers' Championship with 18 points and Grosjean was 17th with 8 points and Haas were 9th in the Constructors' Championship with 26 points. The first race after the summer break was the Belgian Grand Prix. Qualifying went better than expected and Grosjean qualified 11th and Magnussen made it to Q3 and qualified 10th. Grid penalties for Ricardo and Hülkenberg moved them up to 8th and 9th. Both drivers started the race on soft tyres. Norris passed Grosjean at last source and Raikkonen and Verstappen collided there which gave both drivers two places but Magnussen was forced wide and passed by Grosjean and Norris. Both drivers then passed Perez on the run to Urouge where Verstappen crashed and the safety car was then deployed. The race resumed at the end of lap 4. Perez passed Magnussen on the Kemmel straight on lap 10, Gasly did there on lap 11, Stroll passed him at Lecum on lap 12 and Kvyat passed him there on lap 13 putting him out of the points. Gasly pitted on lap 13 which gave Magnussen a place and Giovinazzi then passed him on the Kemmel straight on lap 15 and Albon then passed him at the bus stop chicane. Stroll then pitted and then Perez on lap 15 which gave him two places. Ricardo then passed him on the Kemmel straight on lap 16. Grosjean pitted on lap 16 for a set of medium tyres and rejoined one second behind Magnussen in 11th. He passed Magnussen at last source on lap 18. Perez then passed Magnussen again at Lecum and Gasly passed him on the run to the start finish line. He tried to repass Gasly at Lecum on lap 19 but was pushed wide and cut the chicane. Hulkenberg then passed him on the Kemmel straight on lap 20 and Stroll did there on lap 21. Albon pitted on lap 23 and rejoined just behind Magnussen. Perez passed Grosjean on the Kemmel straight on lap 24 and Albon passed Magnussen at the bus stop chicane. Kvyat then pitted which gave Grosjean a place. Magnussen had been staying out hoping for a safety car but eventually pitted for a set of medium tyres on lap 25 and rejoined 6 seconds behind Kubica in 18th and last. He passed Kubica on the Kemmel straight on lap 28 and then passed Russell at Uvruge on lap 29 and then Raikkonen at the bus stop chicane. Giovinazzi then pitted which gave Grosjean a place. On lap 33, Grosjean was passed by both Kvyat and Albon at Lecum and Gasly then passed him on the Kemmel straight on lap 34 and Giovinazzi also did there on lap 35. Hülkenberg passed him on the Kemmel straight on lap 40 and then Stroll at Lecum. Both drivers were lapped on lap 41 and Magnussen then passed Grosjean at Pouon. Magnussen then passed Ricardo who locked up at last source on lap 42 and Grosjean then finally passed Ricardo on the Kemmel straight. Giovinazzi crashed at Pouon on lap 43 which gave both drivers a place and they finished 12th and 13th in a race where the soft tyres did not work and they had no straight line speed. Next was an unofficial home race for the team, the Italian Grand Prix. FP1 and some of FP2 were wet which are limited running. Grosjean was eliminated in Q1 in qualifying and lined up 16th and Magnussen missed Q3 and lined up 12th. Grid penalties for Raikkonen, Norris and Gasly moved Magnussen to 11th and Grosjean to 13th. Both drivers started the race on soft tyres. Grosjean got lightly rear-ended by Gasly at Variante del Recifilo which put the car in anti-stall and was forced to go through the escape road and rejoined behind Norris in 17th. He then passed Norris at the first Lesmo. Perez passed Grosjean at Variante della Roggia on lap 3. Sainz and Albon then collided at the first Lesmo which pushed Albon off track and he rejoined behind Magnussen. Grosjean passed Russell at Variante del Recifilo on lap 5 and then passed Kubica there on lap 6. Vettel spun at the Ascari chicane on lap 6 and while rejoining hit Stroll which made him spin 2 which gave Magnussen 2 places. Stroll in turn almost hit Gasly and forced him wide and Grosjean passed him on the run to Parabolica. Vettel then pitted for a new front wing which gave Grosjean 13th. Grosjean spun himself at the Ascari chicane on lap 7 and flat spotted his tyres. He rejoined in 16th and then pitted for a set of medium tyres and rejoined 4 seconds behind Vettel in 20th and last. Albon then passed Magnussen at Variante della Roggia on lap 8 by cutting the corner. Kvyat then passed Magnussen on the run to Variante del Recifilo on lap 9. Vettel served a 10 second stop go penalty on lap 12 and rejoined 20 seconds behind Magnussen. Grosjean was lapped on lap 19. 
Magnussen pitted for a set of medium tyres on lap 20 and rejoined 3 seconds behind Stroll in 16th. Stroll then pitted on lap 22. Vettel caught and passed to Grosjean on the run to Variante del Resofino on lap 23, leaving him last. Norris and Russell pitted on lap 23 which gave Magnussen two more places. Raikkonen pitted on lap 26 and rejoined 17 seconds behind Grosjean. Sainz retired on lap 28 which gave both drivers a place and the virtual safety car came out. Perez and Gasly then pitted which gave Magnussen two places and the race resumed. Kvyat also retired on lap 30 which gave both drivers a place and the virtual safety car was deployed for the second time. Grosjean took the chance to pit for a second set of soft tyres and rejoined 5 seconds behind Raikkonen in 18th and last. The race resumed on lap 31. Magnussen ran wide at Variante del Resofilo and was passed by Perez. On lap 34, he locked up at Variante del Resofilo defending against Norris and went through the escape road and rejoined behind him and Verstappen. He had flat spotted the front left tyre and then missed his braking at Variante del Arroggia and went through the escape road and was passed by Gasly as well. He then pitted for a second set of soft tyres and rejoined 6 seconds behind Russell in 15th and lapped. Vettel pitted on lap 41 and rejoined 16 seconds behind Magnussen, but on lap 43 Magnussen pitted to retire with a hydraulic failure. Grosjean closed up to Kubica and forced him to lock up and go through the escape road at Variante del Retofino on lap 44 and he finished another trying race in 16th. Before the Singapore Grand Prix, Haas announced that they had parted ways with Rich Energy with immediate effect. William Storey had recently been reappointed as CEO, and the cars retained the black and gold livery, but all references to Rich Energy were now gone. Here, the team also announced that Grosjean and Magnussen would both be staying with the team for 2020, making it their fourth consecutive year as teammates. Both drivers struggled for pace and grip in practice, at a circuit they knew would not suit their car. Grosjean was eliminated in Q1 and qualified 18th, and Magnussen qualified 15th. Ricardo being disqualified and a grid penalty for Perez moved Magnussen to 13th and Grosjean to 17th. Both drivers started the race on medium tyres. Magnussen passed Raikkonen off the line, but Grosjean had a poor start and was passed by Russell, Kubica and Ricardo. Russell and Ricardo collided at Turn 1 which damaged Russell's front wing and Grosjean cut the corner and passed Russell on the run to Turn 5. Magnussen then passed Gasly at Turn 5. Sainz and Hulkenberg collided at Turn 5 and gave each other punctures and both drivers passed Sainz on the run to Turn 7. Hulkenberg, Russell and Sainz all pitted, leaving Magnussen 9th and Grosjean 17th at the end of lap 1. Grosjean passed Kubica at Turn 1 on lap 2. Kvyat, Perez and Raikkonen pitted on laps 12, 13 and 15 respectively which gave Grosjean 3 places. Magnussen pitted for a set of hard tyres on lap 18 and rejoined 11 seconds behind Kubica in 14th. Hulkenberg had been trailing Grosjean throughout the first stint and eventually passed him at turn 7 on lap 19. Norris pitted on lap 20 and rejoined in between Grosjean and Magnussen and passed Grosjean at turn 6 on lap 22 and Grosjean then let Magnussen through at turn 15. Raikkonen then passed him at turn 7 on lap 23. Grosjean pitted for a set of hard tyres on lap 23 and rejoined 9 seconds behind Russell in 18th. Stroll and Gasly pitted on laps 31 and 32 which gave Magnussen 2 places. Ricardo and Giovinazzi collided at turn 7 on lap 34 which gave Ricardo a puncture and he was passed by Magnussen at turn 10. Giovinazzi then pitted on lap 34 which gave Magnussen 9th and then pitted and rejoined 18 seconds behind Grosjean. Grosjean had closed up to Russell in the second stint and tried to pass him around the outside of turn 8 on lap 35 but they locked wheels which put Russell in the wall and broke Grosjean's front wing and the safety car was deployed. Grosjean pitted and put on a set of soft tyres and rejoined behind Kubica in 18th. Hulkenberg pitted on lap 36 which gave Magnussen 8th. The race resumed at the end of lap 40. Grosjean passed Kubica at turn 5 on lap 41. Stroll clipped the wall at turn 17 and gave himself a puncture and was passed by Grosjean at turn 19 and pitted. Perez pulled over and retired on lap 43 which gave Grosjean 15th and the safety car was deployed for the second time. The race resumed again at the end of lap 47. Grosjean passed Ricardo at turn 13 on lap 48 and Gasly and Hulkenberg then both passed Magnussen at turn 15. Kvyat and Raikkonen collided at Turn 1 on lap 50 which took Raikkonen out of the race, gave Grosjean two places and brought out the safety car for the third time. The race resumed again at the end of lap 51. A plastic bag got caught on Magnussen's front wing during the safety car and Giovinazzi passed Magnussen at Turn 7 on lap 52 and he was then ordered to let Grosjean through on the run to Turn 14. Sainz then passed him at Turn 16 and Ricardo at Turn 18. Kvyat tried to pass him at Turn 7 on lap 54 but ran wide and Stroll then passed him at Turn 15. Kvyat then did pass him at turn 17 on lap 55. Kubica then passed him at turn 14, leaving him last. Magnussen pitted on lap 56 for a set of soft tyres and the plastic bag was removed and he rejoined 36 seconds behind Kubica. 
On lap 58, he set the fastest lap of the race, just as he had done the year before, by two and a half seconds. Grosjean's tyres went off in the final five laps and he finished 18 seconds behind Grosjean in 11th, and Magnussen was 39 seconds behind Kubica in 17th and last. Next up was the Russian Grand Prix. Both drivers made it into Q2, but Magnussen caught a gust of wind on his lap and qualified 14th, and Grosjean made it to Q3 and just about scraped 9th. Grid penalties for Verstappen and Gasly gave both drivers a place. Both drivers started the race on soft tyres. Magnussen had a strong start and passed Giovinazzi off the line and Ricciardo at Turn 1. Grosjean, by contrast, had a poor start and was passed by Verstappen and Perez at Turn 1 and then Magnussen on the run to Turn 2. At Turn 4, Giovinazzi got squeezed in between Grosjean and Ricciardo and locked wheels with both, which gave Raikkonen a puncture and broke Grosjean's right rear suspension and sent him off into the barriers and out of the race. The safety car was then deployed with Magnussen in 10th. The race resumed at the end of lap 3. Magnussen managed to pass Hülkenberg at turn 2 on lap 4, but Hülkenberg repassed him there on lap 6. Hülkenberg then pitted on lap 16, which gave Magnussen 9th. Norris then pitted on lap 20, Sainz on lap 21, and Perez on lap 23, which gave him 3 more places. Vettel retired on lap 28, which gave Magnussen 5th and brought out the virtual safety car. He then pitted for a set of medium tyres and rejoined 4 seconds behind Sainz in 7th. Russell then retired on lap 28, which brought out the full safety car. Albon then pitted on lap 29, which gave Magnussen 6th. The race resumed at the end of lap 32. Magnussen stayed close to Sainz in front, and Albon passed him at turn 14 on lap 42. On lap 44, Perez passed Magnussen at turn 2, and Magnussen ran wide and went through the escape road. However, he had gone in between the three bollards instead of to the left of all three of them, and on lap 46, he was awarded a 5-second time penalty. Magnussen crossed the line in 8th, but with the penalty dropped to 9th, behind Norris. After the race, Gunter Steiner said over the radio, Guys, this is Gunter. Thank you very much. If we wouldn't have that stupid, idiotic steward, we would be eighth. Thanks. A great job, guys. Fantastic. Thanks, Kevin. Great job in driving. Thank you. And Magnussen responded, Yeah, thanks, buddy. What a load of bullshit. Steiner was investigated by the FIA for his comment and fined €7,500. Nonetheless, Magnussen moved up to 15th in the Drivers' Championship. Next up was the Japanese Grand Prix. Typhoon Hegebius was forecast to hit the circuit on Saturday, so as a precaution, FP3 was cancelled and qualifying was moved to Sunday morning. However, more rain was also forecast for Sunday morning, which meant that if qualifying was cancelled as well, qualifying times would be taken from FP2, where Grosjean was 13th and Magnussen was 16th. On Saturday, with the day off, most drivers killed time in their hotel rooms by either playing FIFA or watching Netflix, but Grosjean spent the day building a 120th scale model of the Tyrrell P34. Qualifying went ahead on Sunday morning. The storm had passed, but it was still very windy, and Magnussen crashed at the final corner before setting a time, just after Kubica did the same. Grosjean, however, managed to make Q3 and qualify 10th. Magnussen's car was repaired in time for the race, and Grosjean started on soft tyres and Magnussen on mediums. Grosjean had a poor start and was passed by Stroll and Giovinazzi off the line and Hülkenberg at Turn 1. Magnussen, however, passed Russell and Kvyat off the line and then Ricciardo at Turn 1. Verstappen was hit by Leclerc at Turn 2 and spun off, which gave both drivers a place. Magnussen then passed Raikkonen on the run to Turn 4 and with Perez passed Grosjean at Turn 4, leaving Magnussen 13th and Grosjean 14th at the end of lap 1. Leclerc pitted on lap 3, which gave both drivers a place. Albon and Norris collided at the Casio Triangle on lap 4, and Norris then pitted, which gave both drivers another place. Ricardo then passed Grosjean at Turn 1 on lap 5, and Magnussen there on lap 6. A recovering Leclerc passed Grosjean at the Spoon Curve on lap 14, and Magnussen there on lap 15. Kvyat then passed Grosjean at Turn 1 on lap 16. Grosjean pitted for a set of hard tyres on lap 16 and rejoined in 17th, 10 seconds behind Russell and just in front of Raikkonen. Kvyat then passed Magnussen at turn 1 on lap 17. Magnussen pitted for a set of hard tyres and was undercut by Grosjean and Raikkonen and rejoined just behind Raikkonen in 18th. Giovinazzi pitted on lap 18 and was also undercut by Grosjean and rejoined 2 seconds behind him. Grosjean caught and passed Russell around the outside of turn 1 on lap 23 and Magnussen passed him on the run to turn 1 on lap 24. Norris pitted on lap 25 and rejoined 3 seconds behind Magnussen. Magnussen was lapped on lap 27. Kvyat then pitted on lap 27 which gave both drivers another place. Norris passed Magnussen at turn 1 on lap 31 and then Kvyat did at the spoon curve. Grosjean was then lapped as well. On lap 34, Magnussen reported over the radio that his seat had come loose. Raikkonen pitted on lap 36 and rejoined 18 seconds behind Magnussen. 
Norris passed Grosjean at Turn 1 on lap 40 and Kvyat did at 130R and pushed him onto the runoff. Raikkonen and Corton passed Magnussen at the spoon curve on lap 45 and Magnussen then pitted for a set of soft tyres on lap 47 and rejoined 30 seconds behind Raikkonen and just in front of Russell. Giovinazzi pitted on lap 49 and rejoined 2 seconds in front of Magnussen. Raikkonen then passed Grosjean on the run to Turn 1 on lap 50. Perez crashed out on the final lap which gave both drivers a place, however, the chequered flag had inadvertently been waved one lap earlier, so the classification was taken from then with Grosjean 15th and Magnussen 17th. Ricardo and Hulkenberg then being disqualified meant they moved up to 13th and 15th. Next up was the Mexican Grand Prix, which was the team's weakest race the previous year. Practice times were poor, and in qualifying both drivers were eliminated in Q1 with Magnussen 17th and Grosjean 18th. Both drivers started the race on medium tyres. Russell passed Grosjean on the long run to Turn 1, and Magnussen passed Raikkonen there. Magnussen and Raikkonen locked wheels at Turn 2, which damaged Magnussen's floor, and Russell then passed him there. Kubica then passed Grosjean at Turn 4, leaving him last. Magnussen then repassed Russell at Turn 5, but was also repassed by Raikkonen. The virtual safety car was then deployed to remove debris at Turn 2, with Magnussen 17th and Grosjean 20th. The race resumed on lap 3. Verstappen and Bottas collided on lap 5 which gave Verstappen a puncture and he was passed by Magnussen at turn 10 and Grosjean at turn 11 and pitted and rejoined 32 seconds behind Grosjean. Gasly and Kvyat pitted on laps 9 and 10 which gave both drivers two places. Norris pitted on lap 12 but was delayed by a loose wheel which gave Magnussen 13th and Grosjean 16th. Kvyat passed Grosjean at turn 1 on lap 14 and Gasly passed him on the run to turn 1 on lap 15. Sainz and Raikkonen pitted on lap 15 which gave Magnussen 11th and Grosjean 17th. Verstappen passed Grosjean on the run to turn 1 on lap 17, and Raikkonen passed him there on lap 18. Hulkenberg pitted on lap 18, which gave Magnussen 10th. Kvyat passed Magnussen at turn 1 on lap 20. Sainz then passed him on the run to turn 1 on lap 21, and Hulkenberg passed him at turn 12. Kubica and Giovinazzi pitted on lap 21, which gave Magnussen 1 place and Grosjean 2 places. Gasly passed Magnussen at turn 4 on lap 22, and Verstappen passed Magnussen at turn 5 and hit him and almost put him into a spin. Kvyat then pitted, which gave Grosjean another place. Raikkonen passed Magnussen on the run to Turn 1 on lap 23, leaving Magnussen and Grosjean 8 seconds apart in 15th and 16th. Grosjean was then lapped, and Magnussen was lapped on lap 27. Magnussen pitted for a set of hard tyres on lap 28 and rejoined in 17th, 8 seconds behind Giovinazzi and 6 seconds in front of Kubica. Giovinazzi then passed Grosjean on the run to Turn 1 on lap 29. Magnussen caught and passed Grosjean at Turn 10 on lap 33. Grosjean pitted for a set of hard tyres on lap 37 and rejoined in 19th, 15 seconds behind Russell and 42 seconds in front of Norris. Norris retired from behind Grosjean on lap 49, leaving him last. Grosjean was lapped for a second time on lap 52. Raikkonen retired on lap 59 which gave both drivers a place. Kubica pitted on lap 60 and rejoined 16 seconds behind Grosjean. Magnussen was lapped for a second time on the final lap and finished 48 seconds in front of Russell in 15th and Grosjean was 4 seconds behind Russell in 17th. It was now time for the team's home race, the United States Grand Prix. In practice, the team tested a new front wing which they hoped would solve their season-long problems of getting the tyres up to temperature, but Grosjean then crashed in FP2. He went back to the original wing for FP3, but then had problems of this causing massive drag, and in qualifying, both drivers made Q2, and Magnussen went 12th, and Grosjean was just 2 tenths slower in 15th. Both drivers started the race on medium tyres. Giovinazzi and Raikkonen passed Grosjean at Turn 1, and Magnussen passed Hulkenberg through Turn 2. Stroll hit a bump and ran wide at Turn 2 and was passed by Grosjean. Grosjean repassed Giovinazzi and Kvyat at Turn 6. Magnussen then passed Albon on the run to Turn 12. Grosjean tried to pass Hulkenberg at turn 12 but was forced wide. Albon then pitted for repairs, leaving Magnussen 10th and Grosjean 13th at the end of lap 1. Kvyat passed Grosjean on the run to turn 12 on lap 4. Vettel retired on lap 8 which gave both drivers a place. Raikkonen passed Magnussen at turn 1 on lap 9 and Hulkenberg then did at turn 12. Kvyat then did at turn 1 on lap 10, leaving Magnussen and Grosjean 2 seconds apart in 12 and 13th. Perez passed Grosjean at turn 12 on lap 13. Albon passed Grosjean at Turn 1 on lap 14 and Perez then passed Magnussen at Turn 11. Albon then passed Magnussen at Turn 1 on lap 15. Magnussen pitted for a set of hard tyres on lap 18 and rejoined 6 seconds behind Russell in 17th. Sainz and Raikkonen also pitted which gave Grosjean 12th. Sainz passed Grosjean at Turn 20 on lap 19 and Raikkonen passed him at Turn 11 on lap 20. Albon then pitted which gave Grosjean a place. Magnussen caught and passed Russell at Turn 1 on lap 21. Kvyat then pitted and rejoined 3 seconds in front of Magnussen. 
Stroll and Albon passed Grosjean at turn 12 on lap 22. Kvyat then passed Grosjean at turn 1 on lap 24, and Magnussen then passed him at turn 12. Grosjean pitted for a set of hard tyres on lap 24 and reached on 21 seconds behind Giovinazzi in 17th and lapped. Hülkenberg pitted on lap 27 and reached on just behind Magnussen. He then passed him on the run to turn 12 on lap 29. Stroll then pitted and reached on 23 seconds in front of Grosjean. Magnussen was lapped on lap 23. Giovinazzi pressured him in the second stint and then pitted on lap 39 and rejoined two seconds behind Grosjean. Stroll caught and passed Magnussen at turn 12 on lap 40. Giovinazzi then passed Grosjean at turn 16. Magnussen then pitted for a set of soft tyres and was undercut by Giovinazzi and rejoined just behind Grosjean and passed him on the run to turn 12 on lap 42. Magnussen had complained of a long brake pedal all race and on lap 53 his front right brake disc disintegrated at turn 12 and he spun off into the gravel trap. Gasly pitted to retire on lap 55 which gave Grosjean another place and he finished 18 seconds behind Giovinazzi in 15th and Magnussen was classified in 18th. The season approached its end with the Brazilian Grand Prix. Rain came in FP1 which limited running and Magnussen indirectly caused Kubica behind to crash in FP2 after hitting a puddle and spraying water on the track. Here, the team found some newfound pace, and both drivers made Q3 in qualifying for the first time since Barcelona, with Grosjean 8th and Magnussen 10th. A grid penalty for Leclerc moved both drivers up a place. Both drivers started the race on soft tyres. They both maintained position at the start. Leclerc passed Magnussen at Arcobancadas on lap 3, and Raikkonen passed Grosjean at the Ceneres on lap 4. Leclerc then passed Grosjean at the Ceneres on lap 5, and Giovinazzi passed Magnussen down Hater Aposta. Norris then passed Magnussen at the Ceneres on lap 6, and Stroll passed him there on lap 7. On lap 8, Ricardo tried to pass Magnussen at Decido de Largo, but they touched wheels which put Magnussen into a spin, and he rejoined just in front of Russell in 19th. Ricardo had broken his front wing, and so pitted which gave Magnussen a place, and Magnussen then passed Kubica on the run to the start-finish line on lap 9. Perez pitted on lap 17 and rejoined 9 seconds behind Magnussen. Giovinazzi pitted on lap 20 and rejoined 4 seconds behind Magnussen. Raikkonen pitted on lap 21 and rejoined two seconds in front of Magnussen. Giovinazzi passed Magnussen on the run to the start finish line on lap 22 and Gasly then pitted which gave Grosjean 7th. Kvyat pitted on lap 23 which gave Magnussen 15th. Perez passed Magnussen at the Ceneres on lap 25 and Ricardo passed him there on lap 26. Grosjean pitted for a set of medium tyres on lap 26 and rejoined just behind Magnussen in 17th. Magnussen did the same on lap 27 and rejoined in 18th and lapped, 12 seconds behind Holkenberg who also pitted, as well as Norris, giving Grosjean 14th. Stroll and Sainz then pitted on laps 28 and 29 respectively which gave Grosjean 12th. Ricardo pitted on lap 40 and rejoined 5 seconds behind Magnussen. Grosjean was lapped on lap 42. Holkenberg pitted from 4 seconds in front of Magnussen on lap 44 which gave him 16th. Perez pitted from 5 seconds in front of Grosjean on lap 45 which gave him 10th. Ricardo then passed Magnussen at the Ceneres on lap 46. Giovinazzi and Kvyat then pitted on lap 46 which gave Grosjean 9th and Magnussen 16th. Gasly and Raikkonen then pitted on lap 47 which gave Grosjean 7th. Gasly passed Grosjean at the Ceneres on lap 50. Kvyat then passed Magnussen there on lap 51. Bottas retired on lap 52 which gave both drivers a place and the safety car was deployed on lap 54. Magnussen pitted for a second set of soft tyres and maintained position. Both drivers were then permitted to unlap themselves. The race resumed at the end of lap 59. Hülkenberg passed Magnussen before the control line, but Magnussen repassed him at the Ceneres on lap 60. Grosjean's tyres had gone off the cliff and he had a problem with the MG UK and he was passed by Sainz at Curva de Sol on lap 60, and then Raikkonen and Giovinazzi at Decida de Lago, and Ricardo then passed him at turn 8, putting him out of the points. Magnussen passed Stroll at Mogulio, but was repassed by him at Junsor, and then by Hülkenberg at Sabida dos Bogies. Magnussen passed Kvyat at the Ceneres on lap 62. Norris then passed Grosjean there on lap 63 and Perez did at Decido de Largo. Hülkenberg passed Grosjean at the Ceneres on lap 64 and Stroll and Magnussen then passed him at Servida dos Borges. Kvyat passed him at the Ceneres on lap 65, losing 10 places in 6 laps. Vettel and Leclerc collided down the Hater Aposta on lap 66 and retired which gave both drivers 2 places and brought out the safety car for the second time. Grosjean pitted for a second set of soft tyres as this happened and rejoined behind Russell in 16th, with just Kubica behind who was still a lap down. Stroll then retired as well, which gave Magnussen 12th and Grosjean 15th. The race resumed at the end of lap 69 for a two-lap shootout. Magnussen passed Hülkenberg at the Ceneres on lap 70. Hamilton hit Albon at Bico de Pato and put him into a spin which gave both drivers a place. Kvyat then passed Magnussen at the Ceneres on lap 71, and Magnussen finished 11th and Grosjean 14th. 
Grosjean drops at 18th in the Drivers' Championship. The season reached its conclusion with the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Grosjean ran a new aerodynamic package on Friday as a test for 2020, but Bottas crashed into him in FP2. Grosjean then narrowly missed out on Q2 in qualifying and lined up 16th, and Magnussen was 15th. A grid penalty for Bottas gave both drivers a place. Both drivers started the race on medium tyres. Magnussen passed Kvyat off the line. Grosjean had a poor start and was passed by Giovinazzi and Raikkonen off the line. He repassed Raikkonen at Turn 1 and Stroll hit Gasly and pushed him into Perez which broke Gasly's front wing and he was passed by both drivers and Magnussen also passed Stroll and Perez. Raikkonen passed Grosjean again at Turn 4. Magnussen then passed Hülkenberg at Turn 6 and Bottas passed Grosjean there but he repassed him at Turn 7. Bottas then passed him again at Turn 8 leaving Magnussen 9th and Grosjean 17th at the end of Lap 1. Hülkenberg passed Magnussen at Turn 8 on Lap 2. Stroll pitted on lap 5 which gave Grosjean a place, Perez passed Magnussen at turn 10 on lap 6 and Bottas passed him there on lap 7. Norris and Giovinazzi pitted on lap 8 which gave Magnussen 11th and Grosjean 14th. Ricardo and Sainz then pitted on laps 11 and 12 which gave them two more places. Norris passed Grosjean at turn 8 on lap 18 and Sainz passed him at turn 10. Grosjean pitted for a set of hard tyres on lap 18 and rejoined 8 seconds behind Stroll in 19th and 1 minute ahead of Gasly. Holkenberg also pitted which gave Magnussen 8th. Magnussen pitted on lap 20 for a set of hard tyres and rejoined 13 seconds behind Ricardo in 14th. Grosjean was then lapped on lap 21. Raikkonen pitted on lap 22 and rejoined 6 seconds behind Magnussen. Stroll pitted on lap 23 and rejoined 22 seconds behind Grosjean. Kubica pitted on lap 24 which gave Grosjean 17th. Grosjean then passed Russell at turn 10 on lap 26 and Giovinazzi then pitted which gave him 15th. Magnussen was lapped on lap 37 and Raikkonen caught him past him at turn 8 on lap 38. Sainz pitted on lap 41 and rejoined 6 seconds behind Magnussen. Ricardo then pitted on lap 42 which gave Magnussen 12th. Sainz then passed Magnussen at turn 8 on lap 43. Ricardo then passed him there on lap 46 and Magnussen and Grosjean finished 19 seconds apart in 14th and 15th. 2019 was nothing short of a disaster for Haas. They had high hopes, having had such a strong 2018, marred by school by errors, but only two races in their car's problems became clear. They had fallen short with the new aerodynamic regulations and found that the car was very strong over one lap, but in races was unable to get the tyres up to temperature and suffered at circuits with long straights and low speed corners, and like all other teams found that the tyres were not particularly durable and they would slide whenever they pushed. They brought in an aerodynamic upgrade that was actually worse than the factory spec and cost them a loss of performance, and the tyres would behave differently in every session. As the season went on, they gradually fell further behind the other midfielders, there were very few circuits that played to their strengths, and clean race weekends were almost non-existent. In races, Grosjean and Magnussen would inevitably just go backwards, often only beating Williams, as shown by both drivers having an average starting position of 12th and an average finishing position of 13th. Grosjean and Magnussen also came to blow several times, and also with other drivers. This is all also before you get to the PR train wreck that was their short-lived partnership with Rich Energy, which was meant to last three years and instead lasted barely six months, and they received only a fraction of the money promised to them. There had been suspicion and scepticism of Rich Energy from outsiders from the outset, and they were left feeling vindicated. For Gunter Steiner especially, the entire season was a write-off, and he resolved to learn from it and try and pick up where Haas left off at the end of 2018 for 2020. Haas finished 9th in the Constructors' Championship with 28 points. Kevin Magnussen was more vocal about his displeasure with the car than Grosjean. He was much stronger in qualifying, winning that battle 13-8, but his pace evaporated in races and there was little he could do, and he lost that battle 7-5. Despite that, he was able to capitalise more when the car was working well and scored the main bulk of the team's points. He finished 16th in the Drivers' Championship with 20 points. As within 2018, Grosjean fell behind Magnussen at the start of the season but then caught up in the second half. He struggled more with the car than Magnussen in qualifying, losing that battle 13-8, but was better in races despite scoring fewer points, winning that battle 7-5. He did, however, have several accidents, both with Magnussen and other drivers, and finished 18th in the Drivers' Championship with 8 points. Join me for part 5, where we shall look at Haas's 2020 campaign. That's all for this video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok and threads at brook underscore f1. Also join my Discord server, link in the description.
A huge shout out and thank you as ever to my Patreon subscribers. Do subscribe to my Patreon if you want early access to audio only versions of each video, as well as a few videos that YouTube won't allow me to put up. And I'll see you all next time.